So for this build, I decided to go with the Dayton Audio Ultimax 12 inch subwoofer from Parts Express. As you can see, it came packaged very nicely. It was nice and cozy inside all that cardboard and it was legitimately heavy. So as I unpackaged it, I noticed that it looked extremely nice. That carbon fiber dust cap was gorgeous. Here we are unpackaging the amplifier. The amplifier did come in a smaller box. I was very careful when I was opening it because I didn't know what to expect. And once I opened it, I noticed that the packaging was horrible. The power cable was just sitting on top. There was a just a random piece of thin foam and the amplifier was actually sitting on, on its side, not even like flush with the box. So I was actually surprised it came all in one piece. Here are some of the items I will be using in the build. However, some of these items I did not end up using, but are good to have just in case. Here's the denim insulation purchased to go inside the box to prevent resonance. As I figured out early on, the box was very, very well packaged by GSG. Thank you guys. It took me a little while to get it open, but once I got it open and the styrofoam out, things started flowing a little bit better. But one thing I can say, the biggest takeaway from the early stages of this build was the fact that the product from GSG came very well protected. And it's also good to have an extra pair of hands to help you out just in case things get a little heavy. Now, as I tear open through this box, I get more and more excited because I want to build this so, so badly. But as you can see, once again, very well packaged, super cool. Okay, so what I did was I individually took out each piece and laid it down to see that I had every single part I needed just in case something didn't come through or just in case something was missing. I wanted to have a really cool inventory of what I was gonna be up against. And in this shot, this is where I noticed that the Home Theater Guru emblem is etched on the center piece, and I thought that was super rad. A huge shout out to Home Theater Gurus for putting together this amazing design. Here are the pieces laid out and ready to go. And for reference, here is a parts list from GSG. You will be able to get a PDF of this exact instruction manual I'm just gonna be showing it here for reference. Step one, glue port brace to bottom panel. Seems easy enough. As I apply copious amounts of glue, probably too much glue, definitely, definitely too much glue. Rookie mistake, <laughs> I am quickly learning what it takes to glue properly on my first run here. So I am brushing it and, you know, making it probably worse but at the same time you got to think more glue is better than not enough glue that's how I'm gonna kind of quantify my mistake but in the future uh, make sure you don't use too much glue because you're gonna be a sloppy mess like I am right here Now it's time to apply pressure to the port brace down to the bottom panel. I applied all my strength and as you can see, glue is just oozing out that I have to now clean up. There I am cleaning it up. Rookie mistake, like I said, but this is something you learn as you go along and I learned early on that too much glue will make a huge mess. Step two and three are gluing the left side and the back to the bottom, as well as the right side to the bottom and the back. 
All right, I apply more glue onto the side of the panel. The best advice I can give and the way it's supposed to be done is any piece that's touching another piece should have a nice amount of glue on it, not too much. Just brush it on. Uh, make sure to brush it on on both sides, so on both the panel and the bottom. Um, that's something that I was kind of curious about, but I found that it was just a better practice to make sure there's glue applied on every surface that needs glue or that is going to be touching. And make sure to have your clamps ready because you will be needing at least eight clamps, I'd say conservatively. It's always good to have extra clamps just in case you need them and it's good to apply pressure really quickly because this glue will dry fast. Here is step three, applying the right side to the bottom and the back. Make sure it's nice and clamped up so that way it dries properly. Step four is gluing port lower to port brace and sides. So this piece is basically going to slide in on those grooves on the side of the panels. All right, step five, glue window panel to port lower and sides. As I apply the glue, I get it all nice and ready because I kind of dry fitted it a little bit and I made sure everything was fitting correctly. I didn't want it to be, you know, bowing or anything like that. So everything was cool. So I went ahead and glued it all up and got it ready to fit right in. As you can see, gluing is taking up most of my time because it's like the main process I guess you could say of the whole build is using tons of glue here's the centerpiece going in as you can see that beautiful logo in the facing the front and you take your mallet and just smack it down a little bit make sure it's nice and fit now here's something I didn't do and I should have done so I should have used a clamp to uh, apply pressure to it and this is going to affect something that happened later and I will show you when it happens so that way you won't make the same rookie mistake I did step six glue inner baffle to port lower and sides here we are I already did it because I was in front of the camera again. Uh, <laughs> how embarrassing. But basically same process. Glue uh, the back, anything that's gonna be touching the other part of the wood, uh, glue it well, and then apply pressure using clamps. Now here comes a part that was not mentioned in the instructions, but, but is highly recommended by home theater gurus, which is to put the denim insulation inside of the box to line it up with denim insulation so i'm using that 3m77 to glue it in make sure you're wearing a mask i'm not wearing a mask in this scene and i should have been because i was inhaling toxic fumes but it makes things stick really well so denim insulation is an awesome thing to use because it's not as annoying as fiberglass do not use fiberglass whatever you do but definitely apply a good amount of glue make sure all the pieces are cut Make sure the last final piece at the end does not cover up the porthole because then you won't have any air flowing anywhere. So make sure that everything is cut precisely and you should be fine. And the reason we are doing this is to prevent any excessive resonance. Step seven, glue top to back sides, baffle and window panel. Okay, here I am spraying the back of the top panel to apply the last of the denim insulation. Make sure the insulation is cut evenly so it doesn't affect the placement of the top to the rest of the enclosure. and more glue. Make sure there's glue on every single piece that is going to have glue. And don't do that. Don't do that, what I just did right there. I just literally apply glue to the top of the enclosure. Uh, that is a big no-no. <laughs> Make sure to uh, just watch where you're gluing because I didn't and I, I didn't regret it because obviously I wrapped it in a, in a certain material, but 
this could be really, really bad if I would have not noticed that and just left the glue there or continue to apply glue on the wrong piece. So just make be mindful of what you're gluing and apply glue, like I said, to anything that's going to touch. Apply it to both sides. So apply it to the actual piece that's going on and apply it to the actual part of the enclosure that it's going to be touching. So that way, everything is nicely covered with glue. Uh, too much glue is, like I said, not a bad thing than ha not having enough glue. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so now we're gonna apply pressure to the top of the enclosure. Uh, obviously my 240 pound frame isn't enough to push it down. So I'm going to be using a block of wood and a mallet. It's just boom, 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 boom. Uh, let's just get that right on. So what happened here was it wasn't right on. So I am gonna be needing to do some sanding because somewhere along the line, there was uh, you know, a little millimeter off somewhere so that's easily sanded it's not a catastrophe by any means just make sure everything's nicely lined up and you should be good to go to sand and perfect your box in this scene i'm applying a flat black primer and paint to the porthole i want the porthole to be as dark as possible i don't want any kind of light wood to be showing through so i'm taking this precaution and just going ahead and i'm just going to go ahead and give it this nice aesthetic uh, make sure to tape up if you are going to be doing any kind of spray painting make sure to tape everything so that way you don't get paint where you don't want it to be now one thing i just wanted to let you guys know is that the glue dried within 15 to 20 minutes and the exohyde dried in about 20. So it dries rather quickly, so anything you need to get done, you have to kind of move quickly. This is something that you have to kind of move with a good pace, because once something sets, it sets for good. So just remember to pace yourself as you do each step, so that way nothing dries up too quickly. Step eight, glue front baffle to inner baffle. So for this part, you're going to apply glue all around the front of the baffle. Uh, make sure to not to use too much glue around the porthole because you don't want a lot of glue to get inside of the porthole and ruin that beautiful paint job you just did. But at the same time, you're gonna need to apply a good amount of glue because this is a very important piece to the puzzle. This is where if you mess up, this is not going to be a good thing so just make sure it has enough glue to just go on there and never come off apply the glue evenly with your glue brush and like i said be careful with that porthole because you don't want any glue dripping down there and messing things up so just apply it evenly and apply it throughout the entire baffle so that way when you do place the top of the other baffle everything is nice and covered in glue and it'll just be perfect and when you line it up Make sure it's lined up nice and even because uh, that's just going to be creating more work for yourself later when sanding. After you place the front baffle on, make sure to clamp it up so that way there's pressure and it dries evenly on the actual enclosure. Wipe up any excess glue and you're good to go to sand. Sanding was fun. Uh, it was kind of tiresome, but I enjoyed doing it and I made the box absolutely perfect. You want that perfect smooth surface you don't want any ridges or anything like that especially if you're going to be painting it with like duratex or exahyde you're going to want that perfect smooth finish no ridges no bumps no excess glue none of that stuff all that stuff can come off in this part which is sanding and i am using an orbital sander next up we got painting what i did was i painted the front and back baffles in a exohyde which later we found out that exohyde is best rolled on not sprayed on so be very careful when you're buying these paints because it really really griefed us this thing was clogging up the spray paint gun it was just bad all around but the finish came out looking okay i actually really liked it however in the future if i'm going to be spraying on any of this stuff it's going to be duratex so keep in mind exohyde is not good for spray gunning this thing it's not a good situation but Overall, for my first attempt at this ever, I felt that I did okay. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the build. It was my first build, so I hope you guys can take it easy on me on the comments. Um, I, I had a, some struggles and I had some, some 
obstacles I had to go through, but overall I had a really good time building this box. This episode's only going to be focused on the actual building of the box, so I know you guys are probably wondering why didn't he put the subwoofer and the amp and the finish and everything. I'm going to be saving that because in two weeks we'll be doing Quest for the Best Subwoofer Edition DIY subwoofer and the hammer is going to be the subwoofer we are going to be measuring, testing, and of course reviewing. So stay tuned in two weeks for the second part of this to be continued saga of the hammer by GSG Audio and designed by Home Theater Gurus. Shout out again to Home Theater Gurus and GSG for putting together an amazing, fun, really cool project for me to do. So thank you guys, and we'll see you in two weeks to finish this sub. Mm -hmm.